Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Sleeping inside this case is a double wowser that I could not believe showed up on Reverb a couple nights ago. So let's go ahead and open it. Oh my goodness, we have a lot to talk about. So first, let, let's take the guitar away. We'll black it out here for a second. Do you guys see what somebody did to this Gen 3 chainsaw case? So they normally look like this on the outside. It's very common for these Gibson plates to fall off of them. They were just initially glued on. They're made out of a plastic material. They're big, clunky cases, but they're good for shipping. Not quite as good as the Asdell made version one and two. But the interiors, you generally found three different colors. There's brown, blue, and then the later made black ones that have less cushioning. Which, yeah, those are nice colors, but they're very 80s. But then somebody stepped it up a notch and redid the case into this leopard print. That is sweet. It looks like when they did the refurbishing, they also gave it a lid ribbon again because most of those have broke. But now let's magically put the guitar back in here. Do you guys realize what this thing is? It's the affectionately nicknamed Blonde Beauty. So original Black Last Paul Customs called Black Beauties. This one's the exact opposite. Instead of having an ebony finish with an ebony fretboard, we've got a maple fretboard with a natural maple finish. Maple fretboard was an option on Gibson Les Paul Customs from approximately 1975 until the early 80s. Now you can find a few custom orders within the 80s. I think the latest I've seen is about 86 now, but it's most common through 76 to 79. So if you find one outside those dates, it's a little bit more rare. But you might be saying, huh, are, are you sure that's one of those? It sure is orange. But that's what made me excited about this one. I've wanted to document one of these maple fretboard customs for a while, but I'm picky. It has to have no fretboard wear at all, and that's hard to find, and I want it to be in clean condition. I nearly bought one last year, but the seller backed out at the last minute after I paid for it. But this one dabbles a little bit into the topic I talked about a long time ago in this episode, the four stages of a guitar's life. There's mint condition, where it's probably worth the most, you know, almost brand new. Then there's lightly played, which is a great way to get a deal on a guitar. And then there's like, yeah, there's a big ding on the top where it's not as desirable. People will want a sizable discount. But then guitars that get played an absurd amount, get stage and road wear, all that stuff, reach the legendary stage four. And that's what age guitars try to mimic. But honest, true wear and tear is hard to replicate without going through the 20, 30 year plus process. And this one, I think it's reached stage four because it's just so putridly ambered over. You can see where the guy's arm has actually worn through the lacquer right here. Because just in case you're not familiar, old guitars age not because the color changes over the years. It's the clear coat that changes into this yellowed hue. And with extreme UV light exposure or extreme smoke, it turns into a yellow and then like a more ambered hue. So right here, what you're seeing is just the binding underneath the clear coat. It's just all been rubbed off right here. Now this might not be the most extreme stage four that we've ever seen, but it's just so uniformly aged. And then even though everything's been replaced on this, I mean, they blacked it out. You've got black pickup covers with Seymour Duncans in here, black bridge and tailpiece that's been top wrapped, swapped out knobs. So it's not even necessarily original anymore, but this thing just has its own vibe. I was really tempted to purchase it for a review and demo. But as you go through these photos, you can see there's a lot more wear to it than even the front shows. I mean, the shop must have cleaned it up pretty good before they listed it for sale. As I can imagine, this thing was probably pretty dirty and grimy. And you might be wondering, why is the fretboard not the exact same hue? It appears this thing's been refretted with absolute jumbo frets here, so they probably had to relacquer the fretboard at that time. Even that looks pretty old within itself. You've got some clear coat wear right here and a little bit there. But flipping over to the back doesn't look too bad at first. But then you can see they have ran through the finish right here. It's got wear back here, lots of dings and gouges. Here we can see it looks like black shawlers to me for a strap lock system that's been installed. Maybe a couple of dings along the edges. But then the lacquer on the neck has also been a little bit worn through. And what's unique here is that the maple on the neck has been stained with the dirt from playing. And it's almost the exact same color as the lacquer. That's a really unique phenomenon on that guitar. You can certainly tell they were probably more of a rhythm player looking at that. And then our beautiful headstock ultra ambered over. Yeah, they also blacked out everything up here as well. But without even looking at the serial number, just looking at this big honking volute, you know this is a Kalamazoo built one. And sure enough, here it is, 144. If it's 499 or less, it's a Kalamazoo built one, if Kalamazoo is still open when your guitar was made. But then we can further date this to 1978 for the year of production, the 41st day of the year. So sometime in February. And it looks like the whole blacked out treatment of the tuners was done fairly recently, because you still have the Schaller holes right here, but you can see how the lacquer has not aged underneath there. 
So how much is something like this worth? I mean, it's got Seymour Duncan pickups in it, so it's not the original T-tops, which are worth quite a bit. It looks like somebody's actually put push-pull pots like Jimmy Page style wiring in here. That's not original, but definitely very useful for a guitar like this. And hey, it's got a really cool customized case. I think it'd be fun to do that to a Gen 3 chainsaw case that needs some like refurbishment. This is like a fun video idea. But here's our price tag, $5,000. It's expensive for what it is, but stage four guitars just have a very unique aura to them and people will pay out the nose. It was more than I wanted to pay, but I knew it wouldn't last long. And hey, did you guys notice Reverb has changed stuff up? They no longer say if something has been ended or if it's sold. It just says, looks like somebody's already grabbed this gear, regardless of what you choose. I think they did that because I kept getting messages for like listings that are eight years old going, hey, I would like to buy this guitar. Or they try to haggle on an old listing. Like if I had something for 500 bucks, they asked me, will you take 350? It's like, nah, sorry, this sold eight years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Let alone in today's market, it'd be worth twice as much, right? So I think they did that change for that reason. But that was for sale by Charlie's Guitar Shop. I'm sure you can call them up. Maybe they just pulled the listing for some other reason. But that was a really cool find that was tempting on multiple points here. Maybe not what I was looking for exactly, but a pretty cool one. Speaking of not what I'm looking for, but interesting nonetheless, we have a Gibson the V. So we just talked about the E2 not too long ago. So this was kind of the companion to that. It's called the V CMT. These things used to be relatively inexpensive on the used market. We're talking between like 15 to 2000, but they've recently like doubled and tripled in price on certain examples. It's kind of like the E2 we just talked about. They're all maple bodies. They also have the flame maple top. And a lot of them have the double cream pickups. But you can find them in cherry sunburst, tobacco sunburst. The big difference is the neck construction and the way that it has the binding and it's got the flame top. But then I saw this thing for 2,500 bucks. All ebony looks extra sweet on this one. It definitely gives you more so Dean vibes to this thing. I mean, throw the Dean split fork headstock on this thing. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. So I was curious, was this a custom order of one of those? And unfortunately, no, it was not. Somebody has refinished the top. And refinishes are really hard to tell on the internet if they're any good or not until you can feel them in person. I mean, it appears to have some wear and tear. Why is the tailpiece all the way down there? Don't ask me. That's just the way the Vs are. Not all of them, but most. But it appears we still have the original double cream dirty fingers pickups. Replace knobs, but hey, we've got a TP6 tailpiece. That's pretty cool. But then the back, they left that alone, which is a saving grace here because now we don't have to worry about heel or headstock breaks, cracks, and repairs, and you can still see the serial number. Once again, another Kalamazoo-created instrument with the giant volute. You've got a little bit of stand rash, but that's all right. And we can see the wiring actually still looks good too. So even though they've technically covered over the flame top in an ebony finish, which seems silly, I'm not too upset about it. So you can find that one on Reverb. It's currently listed at 2400 but listed by France. See, that's what kind of scared me at first is I thought this was one of those scam listings because it is the only thing that he's listing. He's located in Paris, France, and the only feedback he has is like a catalog and a guitar and he's bought a few other low-end things, which this is the exact kind of account that people have been hijacking or custom creating in order to get people, but I think the price is fairly realistic for the refinish. So if you are interested in this, please message the seller and use this tip. If you wanna make sure somebody actually has that guitar to sell to you, ask them for a specific photo. A good one is just say, write on a piece of paper, insert phrase here, like maybe your name. So we could have a piece of paper that says Trogly, take a picture of it with the guitar. Or even better yet, so they don't just Photoshop a realistic piece of paper in there, which sometimes they try to do. Make them do like a, a specific hand gesture or even better yet, make them do like a current day newspaper article. Something that proves that they took it that day. And to round out tonight's episode, I have another interesting modification. So here we go, ES120T. Can't say I know too much about them, but they appear to be some sort of like a budget level student grade guitar in the archtop world because look, they've got a giant plastic pick guard essentially on it, you know, kind of melody maker in style. So once you realize that about these things, this modification makes a heck of a lot more sense. What somebody has done here is it appears they installed humbucker pickups, did a more traditional setup down here with a Bigsby. We only have one F hole because that's how many it started with, but they've just covered over the original design right there. So you have this really weird blocky looking guitar. Like if this thing had a Florentine cutaway, it wouldn't look so weird, but this thing showed up on Reaver is like, what on earth? That is hilarious. 
So I haven't actually torn one of those things apart, but it looks like you can still see some of the original route around here. And then maybe that pick guard's just drilled to the top. It's not like an actual part of it. So they just had to maybe do a refinish job at worst in doing the conversion to this. But you've got a newer Gibson hard shell case with it, so that's nice. Looks like added controls because of obvious reasons. But that makes me think, how did they do that? They would have had to have fished it through that hole. I guess that's not that bad. You just don't have the F hole over here to help you. But then you look at the back. That is a nice maple back on that piece. It looks like they're also including a newer Gibson strap. How much do they want in here? $26.50. Which, if you look at other ones, that seems to be a bit much, unless that's exactly what you're looking for. Because you can get an excellent condition one for about the same. But it also depends, what pickups do they have in here? Looks like newer Gibson Pro Bucker humbuckers. That doesn't exactly answer the question of what's in there. Maybe it's custom buckers, but that's an interesting one nonetheless. And the last one we'll talk about today is this Vintage Les Paul Pro Deluxe. This is another one that almost reaches stage four, but maybe not quite. It's just interesting the way the pick guard is aged. These pro deluxes are actually pretty interesting. The one I had was obnoxiously heavy, wasn't my favorite guitar in the world, but ever since I found out that Neil Sean's famous guitar actually started life as one of these, which we talked about in this episode, I kind of want to actually do a full review and demo on one. Pretty much the biggest difference between a regular deluxe and a pro deluxe comes down to the ebony fretboard and the stock P90 pickups instead of mini humbuckers. But this one has some wear on the edge, but ebony guitars age so beautifully when they get to that ambered over hue. But I wouldn't quite give this stage four status. I'd probably put it closer to three. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.